uh, focus eight is um, atoms, the obvious first target of the application of, um, of quantum theory to chemically relevant systems. Um, and the, the, the core concept, of course, is that most beautiful of electric of potential energies, which is the Coulomb potential. I say it's beautiful because it's obviously spherically symmetrical, which is sort of beautiful. But in a moment, I'm going to take you beyond seeing that it's beautiful in three dimensions and that it's also beautiful in more dimensions. And that's why the hydrogen atom and its generalization, the hydrogenic atom, that is the, uh, uh, an atom with single electron but arbitrary nuclear charge, um, is so important because the potential energy that describes it is the Coulomb potential energy. Now, um, the, hydro the hydro a hydrogenic atom, which is the topic uh, first treated in this focus, is crucial to just about every application of quantum mechanics to chemistry because it leads you to the concept of atomic orbitals. They get extended into the concept of molecular orbitals and beyond. It also, the wave functions of the hydrogen atom are also um, reappear when you're talking about the rotation of molecules as well. So um, being able to solve the Schrodinger equation for a central symmetric Coulomb potential is crucial. And it introduces you know, those central concepts of, of, the, um, of chemistry, like atomic orbitals. And of course, it does it in a funny way um, because it introduces um, s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, and so on, in terms of the different ang orbital angular momenta of the, of, the, um, of the electron. And the funny thing about it, of course, is the degeneracy of the orbitals of a given principal quantum number. So SPD, 3S, 3P, 3D have got the same energy, even though they've got different orbital angular momenta. Um, and that really has puzzled people. And it should puzzle you. But the answer, um, and I'll only skate over the answer, is the, an added dimension of beauty of the Coulomb potential energy. Because not only is the Coulomb potential energy spherically symmetric, completely s symmetrical in three dimensions, it's also symmetrical in four dimensions. If you stand up, a, if you stand out and th simply think of it in four dimensions, which I'm not really asking you to do, um, then it turns out also to be totally symmetric in four dimensions. And in four dimensions, you can rotate an s orbital into a p orbital, a p orbital into a d orbital, and so on. So you begin to see the roots of this surprising degeneracy. It's really hidden deep inside the Coulomb potential. Um, also, uh, although I certainly don't go into this, the uh, Schrodinger equation for the um, hydrogen atom can is effectively the same as the hydrogen atom, as the Schrodinger equation for a harmonic oscillator. So if you can solve one, you can solve the other. Uh, there are very deep connections between these different types of system that are so important in chemistry. And of course, um, it's through atomic spectra that we explore the, the innards of atoms. And it's through the quantum mechanical structure that we can start to understand the selection rules. And whenever, most of the time when you want to understand a selection rule in atomic spectra, you should think of it in terms of the conservation of angular momentum, because a photon has got a spin of one. So it either carries away one unit of angular momentum or it, if it's absorbed, it brings one unit of angular momentum. So you can always account for selection rules 
in terms of the conservation of angular momentum, bearing, mind, bearing in mind the angular momentum of a photon. So um, once you've got the hydrogen atom, and once you understand the spectroscopic transitions that take place, once again, it's that familiar sequence of going from, if you like, the ideal to the real. Um, how do you cope with many electron atoms uh, where you can't solve the Schrodinger equation explicitly um, because you know, it's a multi-body problem and the, there are no analytical solutions, yet very good numerical solutions, of course, but a part of chemistry is understanding, not just calculation. And this is where um, the Pauli principle comes in of a deep feature of nature, which restricts the way that electrons are allowed to occupy the available um, wave functions of, of the system. It brings you to the orbital approximation where you say, well, as a first go at describing um, atoms, I'll pretend that they've got orbitals that look like hydrogens. Um, maybe they're pulled in a bit by higher charge and so on. Maybe they're puffed out a bit by electronic repulsions. But that will be my starting point. And then I will use what I know about the hydrogen atom, what I know about the interaction between electrons as modelled by the effects of penetration and shielding and what I know about the Pauli principle to limit the number to two of electrons that it can occupy and that's a very deep problem of course a very deep principle um, which limits the number to two of the um, number of electrons that can occupy a given state and I can now use the building up principle to account for the periodic table, in a word, and the periodicity of the properties of the atoms. And then I can also go into the compli more complicated business of, of the atomic spectra of many electron atoms. You know, what is the effect of having, say, a dozen electrons in an atom? What transitions can take place? And once again, it boils down to thinking in terms of conservation of angular momentum, the way that the angular momenta of arising from the orbital motion of electrons couple together, how the spins couple together, how the electron orbital motion and the spin angular momentum couple together through spin orbit interaction to give you really states of definite total angular momentum. So you can still classify the states of the, the, these spherically symmetrical systems in terms of angular momentum and then to apply the appropriate selection rules. And that leads you really to an understanding of all the information you can get from atomic spectra. So uh, this focus has really taken you from um, the realisation that you simply have to solve the Schrodinger equation for the Coulomb potential energy, finding that it's got all sorts of interesting properties, introduces the concept of orbitals, atomic orbitals. Use that concept to account for the structure of many electron systems and the transitions that one atom, that an atom can make between its allowed states. So you've got a complete atomic story at that stage.